Hey there. So I'm going to give you some tips on how to spot a lazy researcher. And you might not be on the hunt for lazy researchers, but your advisors might and the auditors at conferences where you're presenting your poster might um, and journal editors might be as well. So how to spot a lazy researcher. So here's my uh, kind of mock up of a dummy paper. And first thing I'm going to show you is looking at uh, our topic here, which is a systematic review. Let's scroll down to the methods section. And here's our methods section. In the methods, a systematic review of interventions, blah, blah, blah. Oftentimes, student researchers, novice researchers want to wow everybody with the number of databases they searched. So first things first, if you're a one person shop and you're doing this for a class or even maybe for your thesis, um, searching all of these databases is going to be near impossible unless you're looking at something that's highly, highly specific. So that's the first thing. The next thing is I see a problem here in Google Scholar. Remember, Google Scholar has all kinds of stuff. So if I'm doing a systematic review and I'm searching Google Scholar, that's going to indicate you probably didn't systematically search very well unless your topic is incredibly niche. So generally speaking, if you're doing a systematic review, you want to go into whatever databases are focused in your area, access them through something like EBSCOhost, um, a platform that will really allow you to count up and account for the references you're finding. That's the purpose of a systematic review. It's all a counting game. Now there's another problem here and the other problem is this says, and I've seen this so many times, that someone searched PubMed and Medline. Um, so they're the same. <laughs> Medline is um, more, um, I, I believe it's entirely peer-reviewed research. PubMed has books, it's got newsletters, other sorts of things. It's all the National Library of Medicine. So you should not be searching both of them. If you can't access Medline and you basically only can get um, databases that are publicly available, then you're going to want to say you search PubMed, but don't include both of them because that tells me that you're lazy and you basically found the same things. And, and so uh, never include both of them. Now the other thing that's kind of interesting is this is a systematic review of interventions. Here we have interventions and we got this really suspicious character over here and that's the Cochrane Database of Systematic Reviews. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen this on clinical students uh, posters uh, when they're supposed to be looking for interventions. If you're looking for interventions, don't look at reviews as part of your inclusion criteria. You will look there and find nothing. What you should do in your pre-reading is go to the Cochrane database, see who's done reviews, read up on those, and look at the reference list. So that's something that you can include as well. So if you're including this, uh, any of these, um, that shows me that you're a lazy researcher. Um, okay, so the next area of lazy research is, I'm going to scroll down through my results section uh, to bring you this particular paragraph. And, um, and it starts with, in one study, comparing blah, blah, blah. And, and so what we don't want to ever see in systematic reviews is this annotated bibliography format where you're giving a laundry list of one study did this, one study did that, one study did that. All you're doing is wasting paper and you're padding your words. So if your professor says that you've got a word count, if you've got to do 5,000 words, um, please don't spend 3,000 of your words summarizing what each different article said. What you aim to do in systematic reviews is compare and contrast the studies based upon their um, uh, based upon their different characteristics. So the last, and this is one of my super secrets, and I always, I always uh, giggle when I go to conference pre conferences when um, students are presenting posters. So here's my laundry list in um, right here in my article. Uh, in my draft, but I'm going to come on down here to this lovely reference. I'm not going to click on it because it's going to kind of block everything out, but you'll notice that I've got my lovely reference list and this particular one has brackets. I've inserted this using Zotero and that bracket around the title of the article tells me something and you might not know that I know this, but it tells me that this article was not published in English. So when I pulled it into Zotero, the brackets exist there um, to, uh, to, to let the user know that this is published in a language other than English. These folks um, are, are not based in the U.S., but th the citation before, they published some articles in English and some in, other la in, 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 um, in their native language. So 
when we see bracketed references, especially when you put selected references on a poster, that tells me that you're a lazy researcher, unless of course your inclusion criteria says you're going to include articles if they're published in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. So don't be a lazy researcher. Go ahead and make sure that you're, um, you're being honest in terms of what you're presenting and you're going to get a lot more out of your project. Happy researching.